Hello grade 11s, in today's video we're going to be looking at Lewis dots diagrams and chemical bonding. It's absolutely essential that you know how to draw a Lewis dot diagram for covalently bonded molecules or compounds. So we're going to jump right in and look at those. In the previous video we went over what a chemical bond is, why a chemical bond forms. So if you missed that video check out the link in the description box below. But in this video we're going to be focusing on how to represent covalent chemical bonds and that is by using a Lewis dot diagram. Now again this is something that you should have learned in grade 10 so hopefully this is more revision than anything else. In this playlist I will have several examples of different Lewis dot diagrams that you can go look at. I also have videos that I did for grade 10s which still apply for the grade 11s. I will link them below. But let's start at the beginning. Covalent bonds occur between two non-metal atoms. And in the previous video, I emphasized that if we ask you to define a covalent bond, you can't just stop there and say a covalent bond is something that happens between two non-metal atoms. You need to be specific and tell me what a covalent bond is. The official proper definition of a covalent bond is a covalent bond is the sharing of electrons between two non-metal atoms to form a molecule. You need to say sharing. You need to say of electrons. You need to say between two non-metal atoms and it forms a molecule. All these words are very, very important in the definition. You can't leave them out. Now, why would they want to share? What's the point? Why would they do that? The different atoms want to share their valence electrons. Remember, it's the valence electrons or the outer electrons which are shared. I'll go over that in a second. But they want to share these electrons because they want to reach noble gas structure. In other words, they want full outer orbitals. Learning about outer orbitals and electron configuration and all of that stuff is something that we did in grade 10. So if you want to recap on that, you can go look at my grade 10 playlist. But basically what you need to know is when two atoms combine, when they form a chemical bond, they do that because they want to reach noble gas structure. They want to fill their outer orbitals. That makes them more stable it gives them a lower potential energy. So this is the reason why bonding happens. Now, just as I've mentioned, atoms with unfilled valence orbitals, in other words, their valence orbitals, their outer orbitals are not full. They are empty spaces. These atoms share valence electrons with other atoms in order to fill their valence orbitals. And we follow something when we draw our Lewis dot diagrams called the octet rule. Now, if you haven't heard of this last year, the octet rule basically says that each atom combines with other atoms in such a way that they strive, they try and have eight electrons. So think of octet, oct, like an octopus, like an octagon, oct is eight. So they want eight electrons in their outer energy level. And if they get eight, it means that they have the same electron configuration as a noble gas, which is what they want then they're stable, then their potential energy is as low as can be, stable compound. So it's the octet rule that we will be following. These are the different types of covalent bonds that you'll be learning about. So I will go over this very briefly in this video. I'll go over the different types. I'll go over how to draw a Lewis dot diagram for elements and then for compounds. And we'll go over each of these and do examples in separate videos, especially the dates of covalent bond. Now, we need to grab a periodic table if we're going to draw Lewis dot diagrams. This is the one that is in your exam guidelines. It is the one that is given to you in your tests and in your exams. So it's a good thing to get familiar with this one that's behind me over here. And you can see that I've labeled this diagram. This one, one, two, skip the middle, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Those labels aren't given to you on the diagram. You need to fill those in. Okay, I'll explain what those are now. Another thing that you need to fill in when you get your periodic table are the valencies or the charges. This group, group one, is a plus one charge. Group two is a plus two charge. Skip the middle, plus three, plus minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. That's another important thing that's going to help you. But the reason I want us to focus on these numbers over here is because these are the Roman group numerals on your periodic table. I cut that off, but your periodic table should show Roman group numerals at the top. So Roman group numbers like that. So like that, I cut it off. You can see that one, two, 
three, four, and so on. Now, what these numbers represent, these numbers are actually the numbers of valence electrons, which means it's the number of electrons in the outer orbitals. Now, for example, what that means is magnesium has two valence electrons. Sodium has one valence electron. Boron has three valence electrons. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. That's what those numbers mean. You need to know that in order to draw a Lewis dot diagram. Why do I need to know this? Why do I care about the valence electrons? That is because the Lewis dot diagrams represent the electron configuration of the valence electrons. We don't show all the electrons on the Lewis dot diagram, only the valence electrons. And we show it as dots. That's why it's called Lewis dot diagram. Or you can show it as crosses arranged around the atom. And here are some other things that you need to know. Electrons that are paired are shown as a pair of dots. Electrons that are unpaired are shown as single dots. And again, I speak about the octet rule over here. Usually, atoms require eight electrons in the outermost energy level, except hydrogen. That's our exception, our one element. That's an exception. Hydrogen needs two. Okay. Sometimes we need to form multiple covalent bonds. So not just single bonds but maybe a double bond or a triple bond. Now, before we get into actually drawing Lewis dot diagrams for bonded um, molecules or compounds, I want us just to go over how to draw a Lewis dot diagram for elements quickly. So over here, you can see that I drew the Lewis dot diagram for the nitrogen atom. As you can see, there are five dots that surround nitrogen. And the reason why there are five dots is because if you look at the periodic table, look for nitrogen over here, you can see that that corresponds to the number five. So you need to be able to look at the periodic table, look for the elements, and therefore know how many valence electrons go around your atom or your element over here. Now, how you draw this is if I had to ask you to draw nitrogen, you know that there's five valence electrons. So you start at the top, one, two, three, four. So you do one dot or cross around each of the four sides of the element. Think of the, oops, think of the element as having one, two, three, four sides, if that makes sense. So we always start with one dot on each side first. So one on the top, one on the right, one on the bottom, one on the left. But we don't want four dots. We want five dots because there's five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, and then we start at the top again, five. Now, what I want you to understand from what we just did, and that's exactly the same as the photo over there, what I want you to understand is that this means that nitrogen has five electrons or five valence electrons but remember when we when it combines with another element we said that how many does it want in total it wants to follow the octet rule so what that means is it wants to have eight in total so if it already has five that means it needs three more so ideally it would like to share with an element that can give it three more or that can share three more with it because five plus three gives me the eight. That's where the octet rule comes in. If I ask you to draw the Lewis dot diagram for oxygen, look at your periodic table. Let's look for oxygen. It's over here. It's got six. So we say, okay, cool. Oxygen. I'm going to use crosses now. It's one, two, three, four. So fill up each side first, then start at the top. Five, six. So it has six. How many does it need in order to reach octet structure? It needs two more. Okay, hydrogen, however, if I ask you to draw the Lewis dot diagram for the element hydrogen, look at hydrogen, it has one valence electron. So hydrogen has one valence electron, has one. Now remember, hydrogen is our exception. It doesn't need eight, it needs two in total. That means it needs one more. This is important knowing how many valence electrons it has versus how many it needs, because that will help us to determine if it's going to form a single bond with something else, or a double bond, or a triple bond. So let's take a look at how we do Lewis dot diagrams for compounds or molecules. If I had to ask you, for example, to draw the Lewis dot diagram for the hydrogen molecule, or H2, or hydrogen gas, you know H2, each hydrogen has one. Okay, so this one has one, plus this hydrogen has one. Remember what we said? Hydrogen has one, it needs one more. So it makes sense that the hydrogen on the left will obviously keep its electron and it will share with the hydrogen on the right. 
it'll basically form a molecule that looks like this. The shared pair gets pulled to the middle, and that is my final result. Now, if I asked you for the Lewis dot diagram of the hydrogen molecule, all you need to do for me is this final diagram over here. If I asked you for the Lewis dot diagrams for the formation of the hydrogen molecule, then I want to see all the steps. So I've summarized that over here for you. If I want the Lewis dot diagram just for the final molecule, for the hydrogen molecule, I just need the final diagram. But if I want for the formation, I want you to show me the entire reaction, which is this whole thing over here. Okay, now, how did I know that that's what it must look like? Remember, we said that each hydrogen needs two in order to be full. So the hydrogen on the left initially had one, but because it's sharing, it now has one, two. The hydrogen on the right initially had one, but now that it's sharing, it also has two. So it's reached its stable configuration. If I ask you to draw the Lewis dot diagram for hydrogen chloride or HCl, you will do it as follows. I'm going to do the formation. So I'm going to show you all the steps just so that I can make sure that everyone understands. So H, there's one of them, okay? Hydrogen has one valence electron. Again, how, did, how do I know that? Go to your periodic table. Hydrogen has one valence electron. Cool, one, plus chlorine. Now, again, to your periodic table, here's chlorine over here. It has seven valence electrons. That means that I'm going to do seven dots around the molecule. Now, because I used a cross for H, it makes sense to use a different symbol for chlorine, just so that I can see which electrons originally came from which atom. Okay, so one for hydrogen, seven for chlorine. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, then start at the top again, five, six, seven. Now, take note, this hydrogen has one, it needs one more. Chlorine has seven, as we said, and remember, chlorine wants to reach octet structure, which means it wants eight in total, which means it needs one more. Now, this works out perfectly, it needs one more. It has a space over here that I can share with someone else. And who does it share with? Obviously, it shares with the hydrogen. This one over here gets shared in that space over there, if that makes sense. So the shared electrons go to the center. And it makes sense if you think about it the other way as well, because hydrogen needs one more. It's going to share with the chlorine. It's going to go in that space over there. So they come together. When they come together, you draw them closer. The shared electrons go in the middle. And then we draw the rest of the electrons around like that. Now, just to show you, this over here is called a bonding pair. So when we have a shared pair of electrons, it's called a bonding pair. That is a bond that has been formed. And this is a single bond because it's a single pair of electrons that has been shared, one pair. So one pair, one bond, single bond. These electrons over here, these are called lone pairs. They are not bonding pairs. They're not shared with something else. They're not creating a bond. They're called lone pairs. So here's another example where you can see bonding pairs. Those are electrons that are shared. They create bonds and then lone pairs. They're not shared and they actually exist like this in the atom. So if you look at it like this, we always put the little pairs together. So that's a pair. They, they exist together, but they're not bonding pairs. They're lone pairs, and that's a lone pair. That's a lone pair, and that's a lone pair. Then look at the bonding pairs. That's a pair, and that's a pair. So that is actually a double bond. When we draw the Cooper structure, which is where we use lines, we draw it like that. That's one bond. So one pair equals one bond. That's one bond. That's one bond. So together, it's a double bond. Same thing here. That's one bond, so it's a line. That's one bond, so it's a line. So this molecule, carbon dioxide, CO2, has two double bonds. So this takes us to the formation of multiple covalent bonds. That is, as I mentioned, when there's more than one pair of electrons that is shared. So if it's two pairs that are shared, it's a double bond. If there's three pairs that are shared, it's a triple bond. Let's take a look at a few more examples and see if you can understand how if when it must form a single bond or when it must form a double bond. So in this case over here, we have Cl2. This is a diatomic element, a diatomic molecule. Chlorine, 
has seven, it needs one more. Because remember, in total, seven plus one gives me eight, which is octet. Same thing here. Has seven, needs one more. So this one, this little cross over here, and this little dot over here, they're going to be shared. Because the one on the left needs one more, which it's going to get from that one. The one on the right needs one more, which it's going to get from that one. They're going to share it. So the shared electrons go to the middle. That's what I wrote over there. Shared bonding pair of electrons go to the middle. Because they share one pair of electrons, it forms a single bond. And the green ones over here are all lone pairs. If you take a look at this, this is oxygen. This is O2. This is different. Oxygen has six. It needs two more. The second oxygen has six. It needs two more. So it needs two more. This one needs two more. So these ones it's going to share. This one needs two more. So these ones it's going to share. All the ones that are circled, they are going to be shared. So they get pulled to the middle. Now see how I said two pairs are shared? So it's a double bond. And if you count it, now each oxygen has eight. Let's count for the oxygen on the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These electrons also belong to the oxygen on the left. And if you do it for the right oxygen, you will see the same thing. They each now have eight. If you take a look at how this triple bond is formed in N2 or nitrogen, this, this nitrogen has five, one, two, three, four, five, because on the periodic table, it has five valence electrons, which means it needs three more. Why three more? Because five plus three gives you eight. This nitrogen over here has five. Again, it needs three more. So because the oxygen on the left needs three more, it's going to share this one, this one, and this one. Because the oxygen, the, I keep saying oxygen, because the nitrogen on the right has five and it needs three more, it's going to share these three. The shared ones go to the middle. That's one bond, that's one bond, that's one bond. It's a triple bond. The highlighted ones, the ones that are shared, move to the middle to be shared. And we can see the triple bond. This is a Cooper structure, which is just instead of representing it with the pairs, the bonding pairs like this, you represent each bond with a line. I hope that this video has been helpful. In um, videos to come, I will go over practicing how to draw Lewis dot diagrams for single bonds and multiple bonds. I'll also be doing the data covalent bond, so check out the links in the description box below for more videos like this, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye everybody!